Hello and welcome back to BS Rugby and it's that time once again of the year. The Autumn Internationals are just around the corner and the Wales team has been announced and as a Wales rugby fan and fan of the four regions. I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at the squad, see who Pivak has picked, have a look at them. Also have a look at those who have missed out and have a look at maybe why they have not been included in this year's squad. As always, if you're new here, folks, and looking forward to the Autumn Internationals and our Wales rugby fans, or just rugby fans in general, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Leave a like on the video and get your thoughts in the comments down below. I'll be interacting with you guys there. Before we get into it, then, let's have a straight away, let's have a look at the squad in full. I'll read you through, and then we'll go through in a little bit more detail. So starting with the forwards, then, Wynne Jones, Rodri Jones, Rhys Cave, Ken Owens, Elliot D, Ryan Elias, Dylan Lewis, Will Griff, John, Thomas Francis, Alan Wynne Jones, Adam Beard, Will Rowlands, Ben Carter, Seb Davis, Chris Chuinza, Ross Moriarty, Thomas Young, Tane Basham, Ellis Jenkins, Aaron Wainwright, and Talupe Falatau. The back then, Thomas Williams, Gareth Davis, Kieran Hardy, Gareth Anscom, Reese Priestland, Dan Bigger, Callum Sheedy, Johnny Williams, Jonathan Davis, and Nick Tompkins, Ulisi Halaholo, Ben Thomas, Josh Adams, Owen Lane, Louis V. Summit, and Johnny McNichol alongside Liam Williams. So that's the full squad. What we're going to do now is we're going to have a look through each of the positions. We're going to look through the back three, the centres, etc., etc. And we're going to have a look at the ones that have been picked and the ones that haven't, and have a little bit of a chat about it. Let's do it. So let's start with the back three. These are the five that have been picked. So you've got Liam Williams, Johnny McNichol, Louis V. Summit, Owen Lane, and Josh Adams. Now, straight away, let's talk about Liam Williams. Not played for the Scarlets since the Lions tour. Maybe gave up the, the tour in the sense without passing it out wide to Josh Adams, but he's a quality fullback. And as we'll see from the omissions shortly, he is someone that probably needs to be in there. One of the best fullbacks on his day in the world. If we're talking about the others, Johnny McNichol is one of Pivak's favourites from his time at the Scarlets. And he's been in and out of the Wales squad, but I'm not particularly surprised to see him there, considering the injuries that we have. He's versatile, he can play on the wing, he can play fullback. He's a really good option to have, in my opinion. So I've got no problem with seeing Nichols there. Then the wing options then are very simple for me. Louis V. Summit has to be there, flying for Gloucester recently, as well as for Wales, and did pretty well for the Lions when he got opportunities to play. Alongside him, a well-earned call-up for Owen Lane, who's been absolutely brilliant for Cardiff Rugby this year in the URC. And then Josh Adams played one game for Cardiff Rugby since coming back, has already scored a try in that game against the Ospreys. And he's just one of the best finishers in the world from about 30 odds. He's a world-class winger, so no surprise there. So on the whole, I'm pretty happy with who's been included. Let's take a look at the omissions. There's a few names out there who are not there because of injury or have not been selected. Now, Lee Halfpenny and George North, let's talk about them too. They're not there because of injury, so there's no way they're going to be fit for this. So they're not in there for those reasons. The big fullback omission for me is Hallam Amos. Now, someone who's very versatile, can play on the wing can play at fullback, maybe even do a job for you at 10. Probably not on the international stage, though. Surprised to see him not there. Started pretty well for Cardiff Rugby this season. And, yeah, just a versatile player. Surprised that he's not been included in that one. But maybe his versatility actually affects him that little bit too much. Maybe it's not such a positive because it's hard to know what his best position is. Uh, for Hallam Amos. Uh, a couple of interesting names for me. Uh, Jordan Williams, the fullback for Dragons, played really well against Connacht last week, has been showing some glimpses, but maybe isn't consistent enough. He's a more of an attacking fullback than anything else. And maybe Pivak wants a little bit more security at the back. Johan Lloyd is someone who's been involved in camps over the last few years, but really. I don't quite think he's ready for international rugby. Uh, Tom Rogers, the Scarlet's wing, has been in fine form at the start of the URC. Uh, was capped in the summer against Argentina, um, but he's not been picked. Not much of a surprise there, if I'm being totally honest, but someone certainly for the future. The big one, though, for me is the man at the bottom of your screen, Jonah Holmes, has missed out. He's been in exceptional form during the URC. He scored a brace against Connacht last weekend, was fantastic in that game and has started really well. Offers you that versatility to play at fullback as well. I'm really surprised to see Jonah Holmes not get the nod. But as we said, Pivak likes Johnny McNichol. Maybe that's something to do with it. But I'm really surprised to see that Jonah Holmes 
hasn't made it in. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on those who have made it and those who haven't in the back three. Be interested to hear your thoughts. Let's move on to the centres then. These are the centres that have been picked. Uh, one or two of them could play in different positions. So Ben Thomas of Cardiff Rugby has been picked alongside Jonathan Davis and Halla Holo. Uh, Nick Tompkins has also been picked as well as Johnny Williams. Now, Ben Thomas is very versatile, can play 10, can play 12, could even play fullback. A young, exciting player. And with Jared Evans getting an injury at Cardiff, it could be an opportunity for him to really step into that role. And obviously for Wales as well, no Jared Evans, and we'll get into that shortly. Uh, looking at Jonathan Davis, he had a tough year last year, but he's played OK for the Scarlets. Captain Wales... During the summer tour, uh, he is someone with a vast amount of experience. Halaholo has been a real find at centre for Wales over the last year or so and has been fantastic for Cardiff this season. Nick Tompkins at Saris has played for Wales, burst onto the scene, of course, when he scored a brace against Italy, struggled in a couple of games, but he's someone for the future, isn't he? And as we look at the omissions in a second, um, we'll have a look at that and we'll see why he's in there. Um, we've also got uh, Johnny Williams, of course, got injured earlier in the year and is sort of coming back to the Scarlets now. But I think he's a brilliant player at centre. I have no problem with him being in there. Let's have a look at the omissions then. Those who have missed out. Uh, the top one, Jamie Roberts, is out with injury. But over the past year, he's been playing really well for the Dragons. Again, though, I don't know. Is it time over for Wales? Could he work his way back? Uh, Wayne Pivak was recently on Scrum 5 and spoke about you know the door is always open for him. But I'm not too sure if it truly is. Uh, we've got Michael Collins, an interesting one, playing for the Ospreys this season. Is Welsh qualified, had a good start to the season. Owen Watkin also playing for the Ospreys, but I don't know, hasn't had the greatest start. Was sent to the bin earlier against Cardiff and has struggled a little bit. Kevin Williams is another interesting one. Very talented, probably not quite ready Uh I, I don't know, maybe he is ready for international rugby, but it's a tough one to say. The other one who's not on there is Scott Williams. Scott Williams, of course, joined the Scarlets in the summer after being released by the Ospreys. He started the opening few games, looked OK. Don't think he's looked outstanding at all. And I think the other options have just been more consistent than him over the past year or so. Let's move on then to the fly halves. Lots of debate about this in the build-up to this squad announcement. These are the ones who have been picked. A couple of names that you'd completely expect to be there, and then maybe one or two have managed to find their way in. Dan Biggers in there, of course, the Northampton Saints went on the line. So Reese Priestland returned to Cardiff Rugby this summer, and he is called straight back into the Welsh setup. Callum Sheedy of Bristol Bears is also there. He seems to have been the natural number two to bigger. Ever since this man at the bottom of your screen, Gareth Anscombe, has been out with injury. He started the season very well for the Ospreys indeed. And as an Ospreys fan, I'm absolutely buzzing to have him back. And I think he's been brilliant. So I've got no complaints on those four. I think they're really good options. You know, bigger, uh, could play centre potentially. Anscombe has the ability to play at full-back. So, and Priestland does as well. So, I'm very happy with that selection there. The omissions, let's take a look at them. Uh, Sam Davis is the big one for me who's missed out this time. Uh, no injury concerns for him, but he's missed out. Reese Patrick is currently out with injury. He just can't quite seem to get over his injuries. Jared Evans is also out injured. He was injured um, in a game recently against Connaught. So, he misses out. And at the bottom of your screen, Sam Costello uh, played for the Scarlets. He seems to have got the nod at number 10 for them and has played OK. Uh, he was an outside shout. I never really thought he'd quite get in there, but he's someone to keep an eye out on. But I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts on the fly half position. Bigger more than likely gets the 10 shirt. Is it Anscombe or Sheedy who gets the second? Album? Or Priestland, maybe, who gets that second choice shirt? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's move on then to the scrum halves. Uh, scrum halves three have been picked and the three usual you'd have to say Thomas Williams of Cardiff Rugby Gareth Davis of the Scarlets and also Kieran Hardy of the Scarlets no real surprise to see them through there Kieran Hardy obviously had a fantastic Six Nations before his injury Gareth Davis has been there for a long time has experience in the camp and uh, is brilliant uh, sniping scrum half well Thomas Williams is one of the best attacking scrum halves in the Northern Hemisphere, in my opinion. So, no surprise to see them there at all. And I think Thomas Williams has that number nine jersey. I also think it's an interesting battle uh, between 
Gareth Davis and uh, Kieran Hardy for that uh, backup option. Be interesting to see uh, whether Pivak wants to go with the safe option of Gareth Davis or wants to go with a more exciting, more attacking version that is Kieran Hardy. And the scrum halves to miss out, in my opinion, of these three. Reese Webb misses out, no injury issues for him, captain in the Ospreys recently in the absence of Alan Wynne Jones. Hodri Williams has started the season well for uh, for the Dragons. He's a leader. He's got a bit of international experience. And then Lloyd Williams is an outside shout, I'd say. I, I think he'd be quite surprised to see him in there, not starting regularly for the Blue uh, for the Cardiff Rugby side. And I, I just don't think he's really in the conversation that much. But Hodri Williams, uh, especially, I think, could feel a little bit hard done by. And I think the three that we've got right now, it'd be hard to see any of them being moved anytime soon, to be honest. I think them three are pretty solid options. Right, we've done the backs. Make sure if you're watching, you haven't done yet, hit the subscribe button down below. It's free to do and helps grow to the channel. And also let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Let's move on then to the forwards. We'll start with the props and we'll go through them. So we're going to look at the hookers, the loose heads and the tight heads. And then we're going to have a look at those who have missed out. So let's go through them now. Rodri Jones of the Ospreys has been picked. Wynn Jones, uh, Will Griff John's been picked. Reese Cave, Elliot D. Ryan Elias, Thomas Francis, Dylan Lewis, and Ken Owens. Now, there's an interesting selection here of props that have been picked. Um, first of all, Ken Owens at the bottom right of your screen as a hooker will be the starting hooker for Wales, you'd imagine. Elliot D. then is a good backer with Ryan Elias also as a backup. Hodley Jones, for me, is an interesting addition. He was caught up in the, um, in the summer tour and he played a bit of a role there. He also played a little bit in the Six Nations. For me, I'm not too sure about him in the Wales squad. I'm not sure if he truly is at the quality necessary for Wales, but maybe Pivak sees something in him that I uh, do not. Wynn Jones is a certainty. Fantastic player, obviously got that injury uh, at the start of the Lions tour, but he will be back. Will Griff, John, back of the Scarlets, a good option. Um, I have nothing against his selection. Reese Cave has been playing pretty regularly for Cardiff this season. Nothing outstanding from him, but again, he's a good player to have around. Dylan Lewis is a very intriguing one. He may not be at the level that he was a year ago where you think he'd be starting for Wales, but I think with some consistent game time, with, again, his form back, he could certainly be in the frame there. Again, a very good option off the bench. That's the one thing Wales have now is we have depth in this squad, something that maybe 10 years ago or 15 years ago, we certainly didn't have that level of depth. And the final one then is Thomas Francis of the Ospreys. I think Francis is a decent player around the park. I think he struggles a little bit in the scrum, if I'm being totally honest. But again, I wouldn't expect him to be the starter. I'd expect him maybe to get a start against Fiji and coming off the bench would be a good option. Again, it's up to Pivak. What does Pivak want to do this autumn? It seems to me as if he wants to blood quite a lot of players into this squad. And I wouldn't be surprised to see some rotation in a few games. The bigger missions for me then are these three. First up then, we have Leon Brown of the Dragons. He misses out on this occasion, uh, a brilliant prop. Uh, very versatile, covers uh, the two prop positions, but also is a good ball carrier around the field. Samson Lee also misses out. He's been in and out of the Wales squad over the last couple of years, and you feel like maybe there are a few uh, players who are just a little bit ahead of him in the frame now. And this might be it for Samson Lee in terms of his Wales career, if I'm being totally honest. I just think there are a few players ahead of him. And I think Pivak... Although we've seen a few new faces, I think this autumn really is the last chance for you to truly break into this squad ahead of the World Cup in two years. And I just think maybe that boat has passed for Samson Lee. Uh, the other player then is Reece Gill, uh, playing for Cardiff Rugby, playing fairly regularly, but again, not been outstanding, just a name that I thought of. So those are the props. Let's move on then to the second row. This is who's been selected, and there is a very interesting name there which we will get to. Uh, we've got Ben Carter, Alan Wynne-Jones, of course, is going to be the captain, Seb Davis of Cardiff Rugby, Adam Beard, who went on the Lions Tour and surprised a lot of people with his performances, Will Rowlands, um, Thomas Young. And I'm going to try and announce this name and try not to butcher it too much. It is Christ Schwinzer, who plays for Exeter Chiefs, 19 years old, is an absolute monster of a ball carrier. 
It's going to be interesting to see how he gets on. Any Exeter fans or anyone who's seen him play much rugby, do let me know you in the comments down below a bit about him because I am pretty much clueless on him. Again, I'd expect him to get that game against Fiji. Not sure how much he's going to play. Maybe he's going to be in the squad really for that experience to really learn and develop under the likes of Alan Wynn, Adam Beard. It's going to be interesting to see. But I'm pretty happy with the selection there. I think it's a good mix of youth uh, with the likes of Ben Cartner and Schuinza. Really good mix there. And again, some experience in the likes of Alan Wynn, who you'd expect to be there anyway and will be the captain for the team. The second row of missions, I can really only think of two, and there's a big reason why these two won't be involved. First of all, Corey Hill has headed to Japan. He's playing now in Japan, therefore he's not eligible to be picked. And the same goes for Jake Ball, but instead of Japan, he is in Australia with his family uh, playing out there. So his international career is over. And then let's move on to the back row. The back row is a position of depth here in Wales. And let's go through them now. So we have Aaron Wainwright, Ellis Jenkins, Ross Moriarty, Tane Basham and Talupe Faletau. Now Faletau is the starting eight, a world-class eight on his day. Absolutely brilliant. One of the best in the world, in my opinion. Maybe he hasn't been at the top form that we've seen in the past few years for him. But he seems to have pushed those injuries out of the way and seems to be focused really on his rugby and playing well for Bath week in and week out. Went on the Lions tour as well. Ellis Jenkins had a torrid time with injuries, but I'm so glad to see him back. Over the ball, fantastic, comfortable with ball in hand. And when he did break onto the scene a couple of years ago, before he got that injury, he was fantastic. He was one of the form players in Wales and really pushing the likes of Tipperick for that position. The other ones are, of course, um, Aaron Wainwright, who can play eight or play six. He's been favoured at eight for the Dragons this year, alongside his teammates, Ross Moriarty, who again offers that versatility of six or eight. And then Tane Basham is also there. He's been in and around the Wales camp for so long, but he still awaits uh, to really get some game time for the national side. But he's been so talented and so talked about over the last few years. We really need to start seeing that on the international stage now. And I hope Hivak gives him the opportunity to show what he can do. And the back row omissions, well, there were a few there, and we'll go through them now. First of all, on the left of your screen, Justin Tipperick is out with injury. He was injured in the warm-up for the Lions. Navidi was injured for Cardiff against the Blue Bulls, so he won't be available. Similar with Dan Lydiot, who is also out injured at the minute. Josh Turnbull is the interesting one in your top right of your screen. Been playing very well for Cardiff Rugby, captaining the side as of recent times. Was called up to the Wales squad in the summer and played a couple of games. The problem for him is he's a little bit older than the youngsters that maybe would be knocking on the door over the next few years. Payback needs to make a decision whether he wants success now or he really wants to be focusing on that World Cup in 2023 out in France. And I think he really wants to focus on that World Cup. It's a shame to see Josh Turnbull in there because he's on form, but he's not going to be involved in this autumn camp unless injuries occur. The next player below him is James Davis. James Curry Davis, the brother of Jonathan Davis. Shame to see him miss out. But again, just we have such depth at this position. James Boatum at the bottom of your screen, Cardiff rugby player, uh, played a pretty good role for Wales, actually, in the Six Nations. Um, but again, so much depth at this squad that he's not being included. The big miss, um, one to miss out for me at the bottom left of your screen is Jack Morgan. Signed for the Ospreys on the Scholars in the summer. One of the best young players coming through at the minute for Wales, in my opinion. Ca captain the under-20 size uh, for Wales in the past. Very comfortable with ball in hand. Good over the ball as well at the breakdown. I'm surprised that he's not been included. That is the big surprise uh, player who's been left out, in my opinion. But there we go. That is the Wales Awesome Squad. As always, do let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on this squad. Do you think this squad is good enough to go beat the likes of South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand? How much experimentation will Pivak want to do? And what players will stand out? Which breakthrough players will we see? As always, with the build-up, we're going to be doing loads of coverage for all of the home nations as they look to get their Autumn Internationals kicked off. We've got loads of URC content going out on the channel twice a week. So make sure to subscribe for that, leave a like and comment your thoughts down below. Appreciate your time today and take it easy. Peace.